Hi everyone, welcome to Fastune. I'm Sean Church and today I'd like to give you a brief primer into troubleshooting issues with mass airflow sensor equipped cars. In particular, I'm talking about issues that are, might, might arise from a dirty mass airflow sensor, an air leak someplace, whether it be a vacuum leak or a boost leak, and how you can identify those problems through both your ECU data as well as the actual running characteristics of the motor. So as, as a brief refresher, a mass airflow sensor, and, and we've got one in this car here, this is a Nissan 350Z, uh, but most modern cars have some sort of mass airflow sensor, is basically designed to sample the airflow through a section of the intake tubing, and based upon the relationship of that sample size to the size of the intake tubing, determine how much air is flowing into the engine. And by knowing the temperature of that air, then we can basically calculate the actual mass of that air, and which allows us then to provide the necessary fueling. Now. In theory, it's a pretty simple concept, but in reality, there's a lot of things that can cause problems when you have a mass airflow sensor equipped car. Mass airflow sensors are great at adjusting to varying conditions, but they're very sensitive to problems as well. So the first thing you've got to make sure is that you've got a clean mass airflow sensor. And this is something that guys will run into a lot of times on cars with aftermarket air filters, particularly if they're oiled. Now, if you buy an off-the-shelf, say, a k and oil filter, the oil amount in that filter is pretty good. You're not going to have any problems. But a lot of people will over-oil the filters when they clean them, and some of that oil will actually make its way through, and it can coat the sensor element on the mass airflow sensor. Now, the way a mass airflow sensor works, in case you haven't seen our other fast tune courses, is in most cases these days is what we call a hot wire sensor, which basically means that the sensor has current flowing through it, and the ECU is trying to keep that temperature of that sensor wire at a certain level. So the more air flows through it, the cooler that sensor wire is going to get, so the more currents can be required to keep the temperature at the same level. And by measuring that current and then converting that to a voltage based upon a resistance, we then have an idea of the mass airflow. So what would happen then if we had contamination on that sensor wire? Let's say a little bit of oil gets on it and a little bit of dirt. No, no filter's perfect, even at 99.9% .9 efficiency, some dirt's going to make its way through. Well, as that filter element, or sorry, as the sensor element becomes coated, it becomes insulated and therefore the air flowing over the sensor element is not going to cool it as much. Therefore you're going to need less current, which means less voltage, which means the ECU is going to, to then perceive that less air is flowing into the engine than what's really happening. So we're going to see a gradual leaning out of performance over time. And the higher the airflow, the worse this is going to get. So how would you determine this? Well, the easy way to do it is simply to pull the sensor out. And most of these sensors have an external element, usually for the, the intake air temp, that you can see. And if that wire is not shiny anymore, if it's coated with a, a black, sooty carbon look, well then, it probably needs to be cleaned. And you can go buy a can of specific mass airflow sensor cleaner from any of your auto parts stores. It's about five or six bucks. Clean it good, make sure it's dry. Don't blow it dry with compressed air. You can blow it dry gently if you want, just with your mouth. But uh, make sure it's clean, and then put it back in. But how would you diagnose this by looking at your, your sensor data in the car? Well, what you might see over time is a trend for long-term fuel trims to go higher. Or you might see that the car is running leaner at full throttle than it used to. And you have to pay close attention to this, but you know, if you, if you regularly check your, your inputs, you might be able to tell. Uh, on cars that have what we call multiple long-term fuel trim uh, bins or categories, say for example a Subaru, which has usually four long-term fuel trim categories, or say a Mazda speed car, which has four or five, um, you might see that at the, the low airflow uh, trims, you don't see a big difference, but high airflow trims, you see more of a difference. Uh, so these are things you can look for. Another problem with mass airflow sensor cars is that when you have an air leak someplace, they really can't tell what's going on. So if I have a speed density car, a car that just simply uses manifold pressure and RPM to determine fueling, well, if we have a leak, that's really not going to affect much except perhaps if it's a vacuum leak, we might see a high idle. But on a mass airflow sensor car, what's happening now is that a portion of the air that the engine is demanding is not passing through the mass airflow sensor. So if we're in a vacuum state and we have a vacuum leak someplace in the engine, let's say on the intake manifold, uh, what will happen then is the air is being drawn through the mass airflow sensor, but we're also drawing air in through uh, the leak. Okay, so for example, on this, on the, on the three fifty Zs here, we have a small uh, vacuum port right here. This one's plugged, but it's not uncommon to have a leak there. Uh, one of the cars I, I would have loved to show you today is the late model Subaru WRXs with the plastic intake manifold. They have a vacuum uh, port on the back of the manifold. It's right in between the manifold and the top mount intercooler, and that port is used to provide vacuum and boost signal to the recirculation valve. 
Well, Subaru set that up so that there is no barb on that port. So it's very easy once you turn the boost up to blow that hose off. And it may not happen right away. It may happen a few days or a few weeks after you turn it up, but it's gradually going to work its way off. And when that happens, you have a big vacuum leak. Well, on a mass airflow sensor car, if we have that vacuum leak, what's going to happen is we're going to end up being lean under vacuum conditions. So at idle, because we're drawing in air both through here and through the manifold leak, we're not going to be seeing as much air as we should. So we might only see half or three quarters of the air that, that we should going through the mass airflow sensor. And when that happens, we're going to be 20, 30, 40 percent lean at idle. And what this does is it can create a very, very lean idle condition, a very rough idle. So whereas you normally expect the, the idle to be a little bit high with a vacuum leak, it might actually drop and you have a lot of problems. But once we get going, once we start drawing more air in, that leak is a fixed size. So the more air we demand for the motor, the smaller the leak, uh, an effect that leak is going to have as a percentage of the overall air flowing. So if we were to look at our long-term fuel trims, or just our fuel trims in general, we would see that we'd have to add a lot of fuel near idle. And then the amount of fuel trim we have to add would go down as we increase the airflow demands and the engine began to rev it higher. So that's a good way to diagnose it. If you have multiple long-term fuel trim bins, if you're having to add a lot of fuel at idle, but less as you go to higher airflow loads, then you probably have a vacuum leak someplace. Now on a boosted car, that vacuum leak turns into a boost leak when we're in boost, and that can create additional problems. Uh, but what's going to typically happen then is we're going to run rich, because now we're seeing all the air come in through the engine, or through the mass airflow sensor. In this case, on a, on a boosted car, I'll go through the turbocharger, be compressed, go through the intercooler, and then we have a leak someplace. Well, the engine computer knows that we had X amount of air coming in, but now we're, we're losing some percentage out that, out that leak, so maybe we're losing 5 6%. So what's going to happen then is we're going to run rich, and we're going to usually see a, a lower boost level than what we want. So we might see additional wastegate duty cycle required to hit our boost targets, uh, and we're going to see a rich condition. Now, at least in that case, a, a leak under boost is going to be safer because we're running richer and less boost. But all the same, if you try and compensate, if you're trying to add additional wastegate duty cycle or lean things out, if someone finds that leak and fixes it after you're done tuning it, now you're going to make too much boost and you're going to run lean. So you have to make sure that you're not leaking from that perspective as well. Now you can always test these things with a smoke tester or a pressure tester before you even begin tuning, but sometimes that can be rather complex and not exactly easy to do unless you start removing bumpers and, and taking uh, charge pipes off. So that's a very important thing to consider as well. One other problem we see a lot on mass airflow sensors is on aftermarket intakes, you have to make sure that the mass airflow sensor has what we call laminar flow uh, through the section of pipe that is present in. Laminar flow means smooth, means uh, even basically. Um, think of it as, as clean airflow versus turbulent airflow. And the reason for that is that, remember again, the mass airflow sensor is sampling the air that's going through the, through, through the pipe at that point. It's not measuring all the air, it's sampling a very small portion and then we have a relationship between that sample and the size of the pipe that allows us to mathematically determine the amount of air flowing through the entire pipe. Now, if we have smooth, even flow across the entire uh, diameter of that pipe, then we can get a pretty good relationship between the sample and the overall airflow. But if that airflow is turbulent, if the pipe size changes rapidly, if we uh, have a problem with a rough spot in the pipe, maybe a, a weld or something, or uh, we have the, the sensor is not perpendicular to the flow, then what can happen is we may see turbulence, we may see strange rough airflow points, and that can cause some problems where at certain points in the, in the airflow range, we end up with the wrong reading because we may have some reversion or some turbulent flow going over the mass airflow sensor. So it's very, very important to make sure you have a good clean section of pipe where the mass airflow sensor is at. Now, if you're buying an intake from a reputable company, they've usually taken care of that for you. But sometimes you have to do custom intakes or a customer may come in with a custom intake. And if that, if that piping has a bend right before or right after the mass airflow sensor, it might cause you problems. You might see some strange nonlinearities in the way the car behaves. Now, you can go in and try and alter the mass airflow sensor calibration in, the, in that area, but that's really a band-aid. You really need to make sure you've got the right intake solution uh, to take care of that. And along the same lines, you also need to make sure that the mass airflow sensor is not too close to the end of the intake pipe. It's a very common problem on some aftermarket turbo kits for some sorts of cars where the mass airflow sensor is located just an inch or two from the air filter. And what happens then is if we don't have clean, smooth laminar flow coming into the filter, and, and most filter manufacturers are trying to straighten the airflow through the filter anyways, we can have some problems where you get stalling or weird behavior, especially on throttle tip-in, um, because that, air, that mass airflow sensor is so near the end of the pipe, and the and end of, of the pipe is not going to have as laminar flow as a smooth section further back. So a real good test to see if that's a problem uh, is go ahead and get your car idling, and then you can simply, if, if, this, if the, the mass airflow sensor is really close to the filter, just lean down and blow uh, a, a quick uh, a burst of air into the filter. You can do it with a, with a, a 
you know, an air wand from your compressor, or you can just do it yourself physically, just blow into it. And if the mass airflow sensor is really too close to the end and you don't have laminar flow, you'll hear the idle change. You might even be able to stall the car. Um, and this is a common problem, for example, we see a lot on Scion TCs with turbo kits. A lot of them have the, the mass airflow sensor very close to the filter because they don't have uh, the ability to have a lot of room uh, underneath the hood. Now, what's a good way to avoid this? Well, if you can maintain some sort of air box around the filter, be it factory or aftermarket, that's going to prevent you at least from having any, un having any unusual airflow. Um, if you don't have an air box, then something as simple as the cooling fan turning on can create a burst of air that might hit the filter and cause a bit of a, a non-laminar flow event that can cause the idle to stumble or, or the car to run rough. Now, once you're going at higher speeds, it's not a big deal because you have so much more airflow. But at idle, where your airflow demands are very, very small, a, something like the fan turning on or, or anything else can cause problems with your idle stability because your mass airflow signal is no longer uh, smooth. So that's just a brief primer on mass airflow cars and troubleshooting some of the issues that we see with these cars uh, with aftermarket parts and tuning. Once again, my name is Sean Church and this is Fast Tune.